Well, we were missing Croatia from the Eurovision Song Contest Grand Final for a number of years, and they finally made it back in 2023 after choosing one of their biggest and most provocative bands. As they get ready to choose their next act, not only are we seeing renewed interest in the country, but there's also some talk about a potential Eurovision winner. Let's talk about the contenders for Dora 2024. Joining me to talk about the songs today is a very good friend of mine, Sanya Dajic, who brings a very unique perspective that not everybody can claim to have. It's not just that you're a fan and a journalist who works with various blogs. You also participated in the festival last year as a songwriter with a song that became the, the pre-show fan favorite, Nevera. Tell me a little bit about that experience and, and uh, what you enjoyed about that. As a Eurovision fan, to be able to uh, to be part of a national selection for for my country, it was literally a dream come true. It was uh, interesting to see how things uh, function uh, behind the, the closed doors. At the same time, I could feel the pressure because the authors of the songs, all three of us are Eurovision fans. So people expected really much and based on a song, uh, expectations were really high. Of course, we were a little bit uh, disappointed because of course we wanted to go to Eurovision. Uh, but afterwards, when we realized, okay, we came second on Dora. That's a great success. I'm really proud of the girls and of the, of the song. And I don't know, a dream come true uh, is the best uh, words to, to describe the experience. It also wasn't necessarily a total loss, because people had been wanting to see Letri go to Eurovision for many, many years. And when they eventually agreed to go and won the selection, not only did they get Croatia back in the final on the left-hand side of the scoreboard, but they also seemed to have reignited the interest in the music industry. The Dora that we see this year is much bigger than the ones that came before it. We've seen the introduction of semifinals, we have a much larger selection of songs and artists, and among them we have some fairly big names that will be recognized by people at home. We have uh, like a band uh, ET that is really well known. We have then uh, Vatra, also a band that is uh, present in our music scene for 25 years. We have Pavel, that is another uh, well-known band here in Croatia. We have, of course, Letri, Damir Kejo, and such like well-known names. I don't know if it's uh, because of Letri and their success from, from last year, but they are willing to apply to Dora again, and I think it's a great news for, for the whole selection. Of this year's artists, we're going to be looking at seven of them in detail. And much like some of the other selections that we've covered, we're going to start with the big favorite. This one is causing a bit more excitement than usual, so let's see what it's all about. Don't cry, So I'm going to go ahead and call Rimtim Tagidim the earworm of the year. It really is. It's incredibly simple, but highly infectious. It resembles bands, the sounds of bands like Rammstein, which Baby Lasagna has cited as an influence, and it just has that impeccable quality to stay in your mind permanently. What's also interesting about this entry is that it almost didn't make it into the selection. It was announced as a replacement after the 24 artists were originally announced, and Zsa, Zsa dropped out, leaving a, an open space. And after being released, it very quickly started attracting attention within Croatia, in the international community, so much to the point where where Croatia is currently sitting at number three in the odds to win Eurovision. I don't know, I don't want to sound delusional, but I can see him winning Eurovision if it all works out, if the staging is good, if the... I think he's very charismatic. Uh, he sounds uh, great live. He speaks about young Croatians who are leaving their country to go and move abroad. And he mixes uh, traditional elements from part of Croatia where he lives, uh, that is Istria. But it's always tricky because if I remember, and I do, uh, last year with, uh, with Harmonia Dissonance, we had not even even a close hype, uh, I would say, uh, that we have this year with Baby Lasagna, but sometimes when it comes to national selections, fans are 
uh, jumping too uh, too early to some conclusions. So let's wait. I can see it happening, but I also <laughs> saw Blanca Paloma winning Eurovision last year <laughs> as a scenario. And yeah. <laughs> as far as how it works as a song on its own, the only criticism that I have is that I consider the actual chorus to be a bit weak and not memorable. But in most cases, you would find the main hook in the chorus, and in this case, it's like everywhere but the chorus. So it's probably not going to be an issue. Given how he is is as a performer and the kind of story that he's telling, I think there's a lot here to suggest that this would be a good contender, even for Eurovision. The only thing that I would say is that I don't consider this to be the only song here that has the potential to reach a larger audience. And so we'll have to see how this song compares in a live setting to all the other ones in order to get an idea of what its impact could be at Eurovision. It is still a fun idea to entertain because Croatia doesn't have a win yet, and if that were to eventually happen, it would be huge. So there's definitely a lot to be excited about. Back again at Dora after just having one is Let Tri, and they've returned with their signature blend of bizarre music and unusual antics with a song that appears to be making a commentary on AI-generated art. Now the band is known for playing games with the public, and because of that, it's not always easy to understand what their intentions are, especially because they just did Eurovision, and so it has a lot of people wondering what the goal is here. I'm not so sure why are they doing it. I I think people here in Croatia will maybe not support them equally like last year because okay they had their spotlight now let's move on to, to something else and their whole PR strategy for me is quite confusing I would say they're saying that they are kidnapped by some chicken and they presented the song they applied for for Dora not let three I don't know a whole story that some people still find it funny but some people are quite okay let, let's move on <laughs> let's move on we don't want to to engage in that story again but it's it's again interesting you can't like ignore them because yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they will shock people again. Now, even if this were to win, I don't think that it would be the same kind of runaway victory like we saw last year, especially because it's apparently leaving people more confused than interested, and it's hard to imagine those people being really motivated to vote for this one. Another thing to be curious about is how this is going to sound live, because those vocal notes are really high, and there's an absurd amount of autotune on them. I mean, vocals aren't necessarily a priority, but I suppose you can just add that to the ever-growing list of questions. But what we do know about them is that they love to shock people and they love to put on a show. So whatever they're doing with these chickens, it will definitely be a moment to witness regardless of what their prospects are in the contest. <laughs> The Balkans are known for their ballads, and they're usually pretty easy to identify because of specific instruments that they use, types of woodwinds and drums. And with this song, it actually manages to strike a pretty even balance between having those traditional elements but still being modern, and that's usually a feature that I appreciate regardless of what country it comes from. The song itself deals with some pretty heavy themes. He hasn't gone into too many details about what the song means specifically, only that he wrote the song when he was at a low point in his life. Tijane translates to silence and it's an idea of silence that he's speaking to. But when you take into consideration the haunting feeling of the song and that you have lines like, is heaven better than all of us, it seems pretty clear to me that he's talking about death and possibly even suicide. And at the very end of the song, you hear two full heartbeats and then a third one that's interrupted. Now, when you have subject matter that is so serious, you have to be very careful about how you approach staging. Doing too much could look over the top and melodramatic, and not doing enough could make the performance not very engaging for the viewer. But by the sounds of who he's planned to work with, this could be very promising. His producer is well known here in Croatia, and he collaborated with uh, Miac, for example. One of the persons who are uh, in his team is the guy who who worked with uh, Constructa on, on her uh, staging. So, uh, yeah. The Say no more. Are, this are, is the winner. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> 
they know what they're doing, even though he's a, he's a newcomer. He pays much attention to every detail, so I'm really looking forward to, to the live. Now with all that in consideration, I think this is definitely one to keep an eye on. It's definitely a very different tone from the bigger favorites, but if it reaches the collective feeling of the audience on the night, this could be very powerful. So keep an eye on this one. Now we've seen many examples of 80s inspired synth pop all throughout the music scene and of course at Eurovision as well. Some people are still very fond of the style, others are getting a little bit worn out on it, and normally I would put myself in the latter category, but I don't feel that way with Marcella's song. When I think about what the differences are when it comes to this song and other songs, firstly I would have to say that the production is really really good here, it's very easy on the ears. The second thing would also be her vocals. The timbre of her voice I find so appealing, and the way that she uses her voice just adds to the power of the song. I really like the song, it's really modern, maybe it's even the best production, production-wise, uh, of all the, the Dora songs, and uh, she's very charismatic. It sounds great in the studio version, but live I'm sure that it will be even even better and stronger. The song name is Gasoline, and I think she, she promised a lot of like fire and effects, she promised to, to burn the studio down, so <laughs> yeah, I have the, the high expectations from her. When talking about how this could do at the contest, obviously the focus is on the bigger favorite, so winning doesn't seem to be very likely. But considering that this is the only song of this style and Marcella has television experience, this is very likely to stand out and could even make it into the top three. Among the songs that lean more heavily into pop, we have Diamanti by Natalie Balmix. She's been making a name for herself in the region ever since participating in a Serbian program called IDJ Show. She's also worked with a familiar name to Eurovision circles, Darko Dimitrov, who has written and produced a number of Eurovision entries from Balkan countries, and to name a few you have Proud by Tamara Tedeska that represented North Macedonia, Loco Loco by Hurricane that represented Serbia, and I'm Alive by El Haida Dani that represented Albania. One thing that I like about what Darko does is that he knows how to make songs dynamic in their structure. This one starts out very soft and slow, builds up steadily to a big climax, and brings you back down at the right moment. And the way that Natalie matches that energy is done in a very effective way. She knows when to be delicate and when to ramp up the power, which takes a lot of skill as a singer to do it in ways that are engaging for the listener. It's something that would maybe appeal to the younger audience who like modern sound, but also something that sounds creation, but also uh, international. I'm a fan of her. I really like her and her music. This one was uh, like a slow burner to me. When I heard it for the first time, I wasn't that convinced, but after listening to it for, uh, and that's why it's, it's good to have songs <laughs> earlier, because I started to really like the song. Given her status and that this is one of the songs that ranks highest on polls, I think there's a lot to suggest that this will be appreciated. I imagine with the staging we're going to be seeing something that invokes diamonds, whether it's in a literal sense or if they're just using elements to evoke that feeling, you know, shimmering lights and all that. But ultimately, I think that the focus is going to be on her vocal performance, and if it's as effective as it is on the studio version, then this could be doing very well. <laughs> Vatra is a band that's been active in Croatia since the late 90s. Over the course of their career, they've had a number of hits, a handful which were number one singles, and they're considered to be one of the big names that are participating in this year's Dora. Now, their song doesn't rank very highly on the polls, but it's the second most viewed on HRT's YouTube channel, which is probably something that speaks to the status that they have, and it's also an idea that suggests that people could be tuning in just to see their performance. I think we'll score a high with Televote based on not maybe only this song, but based on their fan base. I don't know if it's if this song will become such a hit uh, like some of their previous hits. In this case, people who are not like diehard Vatra fans, uh, they are uh, not really seeing them as being Eurovision friendly. Uh, th this song as being Eurovision friendly. But we had, for example, last year we had the tour. 
uh, and they came I don't know, third, I think so. And people also didn't see their song as being like Eurovision friendly, but they are on the music scene for such a long time and they have their concepts. I'm sure that it will look great uh, live, it will sound great live. So maybe they uh, surprise us uh, positively. Now, because we were talking about the renewed interest in Dora, having a band like Vatra in here is a good idea because it helps to legitimize the festival and open the doors for other big name artists to come and compete as well. What I'm most curious about is how they're going to approach staging because sometimes it can be really limiting for a traditional rock band to try and approach a selection like this. Sometimes they do things in a very creative way, other times they take things too far, and other times they don't do enough. So it'll be very interesting to see what kind of creative decisions they make. A number of Eurovision fans will remember Damir Kedjo for winning Dora back in 2020. He was lined up to represent Croatia with the song Divli Vietre before Eurovision was cancelled that year. We also saw him compete in last year's Dora with an English language song called Angels and Demons, where he finished in fifth. With that entry, it seems like it was an attempt to do something considerably different from what he was known for. This one is more of a return to his usual style, and it seems like it's being more highly appreciated than his last effort. I like it uh, much more than uh, than his last year's attempt because uh, it's more Kejo, it's more him. People, for example, last year they wanted him to bring Divi Vietra volume 2 and this is maybe more similar to, to that than his last year's attempt. I don't think it's really fair to him because some people are starting to complain about why is he coming back again but I would say why not, because if he has a song that he believes in, why wouldn't he present his music? He deserves to go to, to Eurovision. I'm not sure if it's with this year's song, but if he needs to, to come back to Dora, I don't know, in the next uh, five more years, I would like to see him if he brings um, quality. There were a handful of artists like Damir who didn't get the direct invitation to represent their countries at Eurovision 2021 after the cancellation. And knowing how difficult it is to go through the selection process and win, it can't be an easy decision to decide to do it again, knowing that you could lose. For that reason, I agree 100% with Sonia. This doesn't seem like the song that will represent Croatia in the end, it just seems like there are other songs that are attracting more attention, but Damir has every right to fight for that opportunity and to prove us all wrong, because we could be wrong. So these are really just first impressions about a handful of the songs. There are a number of other ones that we couldn't cover in the video, and it will be very interesting to see with these semifinals which ones will be changing our estimation before the final on Sunday. As for who's looking like a winner at this point, it's Baby Lasagna, end of story. I would also be in favor of Ilgen winning if it ends up being one of the most powerful performances, but that is something that we'll have to see. Let me know in the comments who you are most excited to see. Are there songs that we didn't talk about that you really enjoy? I want to know. And if you haven't done so already, I would love if you subscribe to the channel so that we can keep chatting about Eurovision National Selections and the show as it approaches. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.